Good morning, church. How is everyone doing? I'm glad to hear that you are all doing well today. It is a joy to welcome all of you on the 16th Sunday after the day of Pentecost. I am Pastor Falamau Samadhi. And for the online viewers and the visitors who are here today, we are glad that you have joined us. Let me welcome each and every one of you to Memorial United Methodist Church, the greatest United Methodist Church in the world. <laughs> Amen for that. For those of you who are watching, we are located in Clovis, California. Online viewers, you may find the order of worship on the screen. And so let us bring our heart and minds and soul to this moment of worship. Let me invite Emily and Elena to bring the light of Christ. And let us start our worship today with Christ who is the light of the world. Let me invite the liturgist, Ruby Banga, not anti in your bulletin, to lead us in our call to worship. I can be Andy today. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, to the beautiful people of the Best United Methodist Church. Ooh. Yay, good morning. And for our brothers and sisters watching online, good morning to everyone, to every one of you. I would like to greet you all with what John Wesley said, even though we cannot think alike, but we can all love alike. And that is because we're all Christians by his love. And with that, I invite you to our call to worship. So we're doing it responsibly. We are called here this morning to learn of Christ's healing love. Help us, oh Lord, to learn your lessons of compassion. Every day, there are many ways in which we can offer help to others to be ready to reach out to all in need. Come, let us worship the one who prepares us for service, who has healed us. Amen. For our opening hymn, I, inv I invite you to please stand if you're able. Cries for the world we sing. Oh. 
join me in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please remain standing for our scripture reading. It's in the book of James, chapter 2, verses 14 to 17. Faith without works is dead. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but does not have works? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now be seated, and I invite the children to please come forward. Let us give a hand to these beautiful children of our church. Thank you, Haley. Thank you, uh, Emily and Elena, for coming to our children's time. I bring a story to you this morning, and... Um, Ruby just read um, the scripture today from the book of James. And uh, this book tells us, this, this chapter tells us about faith. Can someone tell me what is the meaning of faith? How do you understand faith? I know that in Sunday school and youth and young adults, um, program, there is faith that also mentioned from the leaders. Do you know what faith means to you? If I have faith in you, that's mean. Yes, believe. Let's give Emily a hand. Believe. Yes, faith is believe or trust, or you have confidence in someone or something. Strong, strong belief in God. In our text, the epistle of James states a verse that I love to preach today. It says, faith by itself if it's not accompanied by action, is what? It's dead. Yes. Let me repeat it to you. Faith by itself. Faith by itself, right? In this little corner. If it's not accompanied by action, another word for action is work, is dead. Let me um, tell you this part of this uh, verse. Action is what I said is work. We define it as work. That means if you know God, you have faith in God, Jesus Christ, 
and trust and believe in him and you love him with all your heart but you do not do any work nothing that you do to show your love to God or to love to anyone at school or at home or here in your Sunday school class then uh, Apostle James tells us that our faith is dead because we do not love, we do not help others, we do not do anything to help anyone who, who needs our help. Let me tell you this story, and, uh, uh, and, 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 and this story is a story that I encounter when I was in uh, this rural area in Tahajabi before I came here to Clovis. One morning I was getting ready to go to the church to work. And I was driving in the main street in Tahajabi called Tahajabi Boulevard. I'm heading to Starbucks and I saw this lady walking on the street on the other side of the street and I saw her and said to myself mm, she did not wear good clothes and she looked that she was a homeless person so I was driving and said to myself mm, I need to do something about her so I make a turn but it was an illegal turn that I did <laughs> because I need to go all the way to the stoplight and make a left hand to Walmart and then come back because I don't want to miss her so I make this illegal turn I look around if there is any cop around but there's no cop around so I make a turn and stop my car beside this lady so I say to her, hi, my name is Mao. Because if I say Fala Mao, it's very hard for her to. So my name is Mao, what's your name? And he said, my name is Mary. So Mary, where are you going? And no, I'm just going to this place. And I said, Mary, do you want to ride with me? And Mary said, okay, where are you going to take me? It's up to you, do you want to eat anything? Do you want to eat breakfast? And Mary said, yes, let's go to breakfast. And I said, okay, I'll do, let's go to either Burger King or McDonald's, which one? And I said, let's take me to, to Burger King. So we drove down to Burger King and I said, Mary, you can order whatever you want. And Mary said, well, okay, I'll order this and that. So we ordered the food and uh, I gave it to Mary, and I said, Mary, where do you want me to drop you at? And Mary, drop me at Abbotson. And I said, okay, I'll drop Mary uh, at Abbotson. So after a week or two, this is after a week or two, I met Mary again in the same place. And I said, I said to Mary, Mary, hop in. Let's go and, uh, to this bakery store and uh, buy something for us for breakfast. So Mary hop in. And uh, we, we drove down uh, to this bakery store, the only bakery store in Tahajabi. And uh, we got out and we went inside. And Mary was following me. And the lady uh, in uh, the shop said to Mary, Mary, you know you are not welcome here. And I say, I'm sorry, I'm with Mary. And she said, okay. So we went there and buy breakfast for Mary. And we took her to where she wants me to take her. Faith and works has to be linked together. If you have faith in God, that means you love God. You can do whatever you want to do because you have faith in God. Action is another thing for us to do. If, if I see Mary and I feel for Mary, but I did not make this illegal turn and talk to Mary, that means there's no action there. I didn't do anything for Mary. 
But at the same time, if you have faith in God, apply that faith to your friend. And this is all the story that I wanted to share with you. Always remember, when you love God, you need to show that love to your friends at school or anyone that you need their love. Okay? Let's all get up. We are going to hold hands and let us pray. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Jesus, thank you for your love. love. That love we want want to share it with anyone in this world. world. Help us us to help others. others. In Jesus' name we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Give them a hand. Thank you so much. Passing the peace of Christ. You are invited to pass the peace and share the peace and share the love to anyone that you wanted to share it with. Thank you, everyone, for sharing the peace of Christ. Let us move on uh, to our joys and concern. For those of you who have joy to... I'm, I'm sorry. Happy birthday, yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Thank you so much for sharing a birthday with us. Anyone else with joys? Joy of life. Jules? Yes, Sharon. Um, Thank you, Ruby, for doing that. Oh, I, um, I have a, we have a, Rick and I have a daughter that is uh, working on a fire in the Tahoe Basin, and um, the fire is being contained, and so I really worry about her. She works 12-hour days during that time period. So I'm just really happy the fire is on its way to being contained. So thank you, God. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Joyce. Thank you. In regards to your daughter, that are hard work to do. Anyone else with Joyce wants to share joy? Joyce. Let's move on to concerns. Any concerns that anyone wants to share with us and uh, need our prayer? Yes, Diane. I got prayers for the family whose young child was killed by the family dog. Oh, yes. Thank you so much for sharing that concern. Yes, I heard that um, in the news. Let's pray for this child. Anyone else with concerns? Let us all pray and lift up the concerns and joys that we encounter this morning. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We come not as strangers or foreigners, but we are your children and you are our Father. We thank you for your faithfulness and your mercy and grace. You're always there when we need you. You have never turned us away. You have never failed us. 
you never fail to fulfill your promises to us and to your world. In our troubles and trials and when the road seemed long, you have been right there with us and you will help us through and we give you thanks and praise today. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done for us. But most of all, we thank you for who and what you are. We want to tell you that we earnestly want, want to do your will and fulfill your plans and purposes for us. We are all busy with the business of living in the here and now. We have jobs, we have families, we have responsibilities, we get involved in all kinds of things. So help us, Lord, to put first things first. Help us to seek first your kingdom and the righteousness and let the other things fall into their rightful places. We pray for the needs of our people today We lift up the prayer request by Diane. And also we lift up the joys and concern from Sharon. We all come with individual and very personal needs. Maybe nobody on earth knows about the struggles and burdens they are facing, but you know and you invite us to bring everything to you in prayer. So we each reach out to you and we know that you're already reaching out to us. We ask you to meet our needs this morning and give us the assurance that you are answering our prayers. I lift up the sermon that I prepared for your people, O oh Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Faith and works. Faith and works are the title it's the title of my sermon today. I have a question to ask you. Do you have faith? Do you have faith? I think nearly everyone will answer this question with a yes. I hear that. We think we have faith. Hallelujah for that. Do you have the faith that is acceptable to God? It is not enough to think we have faith. We need to test to determine if we have valid, real faith. This is what James is doing in today's text. James asks, what good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? Can that faith save him? James presents a person, presents a person who claims to have faith but does he really? This reason, this person has faith, but he does not have any work or activity corresponding to that faith. So James asks a very important question. Can that faith save him? Can this kind of faith be saving faith? 
Can faith without any corresponding activity save? Faith without works is dead. James uses a situation where a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food. I think it is worth pointing out that the scriptures describe this as a situation of true need. True destitution in the scriptures is not that we cannot make a car payment, the electric pill, pay the electric pill, or do not have a job. We carefully examine the scriptures and you will note that poverty and people in true need were those who lacked clothing, and lacked food. This brother or sister is in true need. But rather than do something, one of us says to be warmed and filled. James asks the question, what good is that? What good is that? This is an example of empty, worthless faith. Verbal statements are not faith. Only speaking words is not faith. James makes the point that you can say whatever you like, but that is not faith. This is certainly important for us understand today. You can say that you love Jesus all you want, but your words are not faith, real faith. James says leads to action, leads to action. Real faith does not merely say some words. James concluded with the point that faith without any action is dead. Faith that does not lead to action is of no benefit. That kind of faith is not saving faith, but that faith. Let me ask you this question. How many of us who are here today and for those who are watching from online, How many of us who have this kind of false faith? How many of us who have this kind of faith? We say all right things to people, but we do not lift a finger to show our faith. We say all right things to people, but we do not lift a finger to show our faith. We look like good, faithful Christians, but our lack of action reveals something completely different. What are we doing that shows we have saving faith? What are we doing that shows we have saving faith? What can we point to in our lives that clearly reveals the faith that God demands? False faith offers no service to others. If you don't have that faith in your heart, there is no service that you offer to others. Belief alone is useless. One person says he has faith. Another person says he has works. But here is the challenge. Show me. Show me your faith apart from your works. Show me faith with any activity. How can anyone know that you have faith if you do not act upon it 
or show it. When I was appointed to this church, I know that this is a big church and there are so many activities in this church compared to where I come from. So many meetings, so many things that we offer to the community, like yesterday, the thrift shop, and also Mary and Lee Chai and the Hmong were making the uh, egg rolls. Day by day, I have to make sure that whatever I was given, I have to lock it down in my little calendar. And most of that little space is full because of these church activities. That shows me that each committee of this, of this church, everyone got involved because you just, you have faith in God that this is the work of God in this world is to nourish, nurture the people in this church. I am so grateful from the bottom of my heart for all that you do for this church. Thank you. Thank you so much for the faith and works that you put in this church. Faith is something that can be seen. If faith cannot be seen, then it is not the saving faith God calls for. James proves this point with an observation about demons. You believe that there is a God, guess what? The demons also believe that there is one, one God also. Even demons have some uh, proper beliefs. Even demons believe in the basic doctrines of God. James points out the foolishness of a faith that does not act because even the demons believe and shudder. Their belief causes them to at least shudder. James points out how foolish it is to think that belief alone has some sort of saving value. James calls us foolish people if we think that faith without work is useful. It is not useful to others and it is not useful to God. I think it is fair to say that there are millions of people who have useful faith, who have useless faith. How many people believe that Jesus is the Son of God but do nothing with that belief? How many? Are we like them? We believe in God, but you do not want to get involved in anything that honor the Almighty God. How many people believe that there is one God but do nothing with that belief? The vast majority of people in this world claims to be Christian. They believe in God and believe in Jesus, but where is the action that shows that faith? Where is the action? It does not exist, right? And that faith is dead and useless. That faith does not bring eternal life to the soul. It is dead faith. The same is true for ourselves. Look at Abraham. Abraham was justified by his works. Did Abraham have actions behind his faith? The answer is that he absolutely did. He showed his faith 
through the activity of offering up his son Isaac on the altar. His faith led him to act and obey. Abraham is an example of faith that saves. You see that faith was active along with his works. And faith was completed by his works. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Faith must be active. Faith must be doing something or it is not faith that saves. Faith is completely by our works. Our faith is carried out and revealed by what we do. How about this woman, Rahab? You know the story of Rahab? How about Rahab? She was justified by work, right? Rahab was also justified because her faith caused her to act. She hid the spies in a threat to her own well-being because it was the right thing to do. True faith does good to others. True faith offers costly service to others. Therefore, brothers and sisters, and for all of you who are watching online, just as when the spirit leaves the body, the body's dead. So also, when works leaves faith, faith is dead. Work cannot be separated from faith. Activity cannot be removed from belief. Faith and works always need to cooperate together. Our faith in God leads us to believe that his only son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for our sins. Our action is to believe, and the gift of our action is eternal life given to us freely. Amen. Every Sunday we celebrate the Holy Communion, and this is an open table to everyone. And you don't need to be a member of this church to come and receive the elements, the body and blood of Christ. The table of love, mercy, and grace is before us. And it's what I say, everyone is invited, regardless of who you are. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread gave okay, thanks to God and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to God and gave this cup to his disciples and said drink from this all of you this is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins 
do this as often as, as you drink it in remembrance of me. At this time, I would like the ushers to share the elements and let us present it to our people. Let us all pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior.
Amen. Our time of offering, as usual, there are two offering plates at the back, and you are welcome to um, put your offering there on your way out. And for those of you who are watching uh, online, there are two uh, link. One uh, link is already given, both of them are already given. You can click uh, that link and make a donation there, or you can scan your form to their QR uh, code and also make your donation there. And thank you so much for the donation that you make for this church. Let us pray. Let us all pray. All that we do is in your holy name, O oh God. Even as we share the riches of our labors, may we continue to honor your name in all that we do. Bless these gifts given freely, that your justice and mercy may prevail in a weak and weary world. Amen. Amen and amen. It is time. Let us all stand for dox doxology only if you are able to stand. of grace and God of glory. song as we depart from here I would like to give you this word of encouragement live in faith and make that faith action in our lives to others may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore amen Go in peace.